Hey Jeff, uh, you've seen Dennis Cholowski now on and off for the past few seasons. What, how, how, how kind of do you maybe judge his growth the most? I mean, we've all seen what he can do offensively. Is, is it the defensive side of things, the puck decision, making decisions that where he needs to show growth? I'd say probably both, to be honest with you. I think you have to accentuate your positives, and his positives is, is um, offensive side of the puck. Uh, you know, if he, the more elite he can become at that, and that's not an easy thing, but the more elite he can become at that, um, then you're probably allowed more mistakes. You know, the, the less uh, offensive plays you make, the less mistakes you can make. That's just the reality of, of, of the players throughout the league. And so, you know, I think uh, continuing to... Um, you know, I think he's growing uh, a, a little bit on the power play. I think some of that comes with confidence, but that'll be a big, a big part of, uh, you know, his ability to, to stay in the lineup here is, is how, how good he can run a power play. And then, you know, I think, you know, an area that, that he's definitely worked hard at his body and gotten bigger and stronger. And I didn't think a year ago he used it, though. And, you know, talking to Ben Simon, um, you know, I'm not going to comment basically on 12 minutes of ice. It's one game, you know, so far here in Detroit. But talking to Ben Simon, he's done a good job with uh, uh, his defensive side of the puck, probably in two areas. One, using his body to in, in, uh, in, in two hands on his stick to win battles. And two, not allowing the puck to get through him. And so there's a whole bunch of situations on the ice where a defender has to make sure that he keeps the puck to the outside. He doesn't allow him to get, he doesn't allow the puck to go through him. It might be a two on one against, it might be going in uh, in D zone coverage to start the hit and pin process. Um, and I think he's gotten better in those areas. When, when you and Steve decided to call him up, was there a conversation between the two of you about, okay, I mean, like you just said, 12 minutes is not going to tell you much. Like, does he get, you know, do you want to see him up for uh, like a certain amount of time before you really feel like you, you can judge and, and kind of what was the message to Dennis? I mean, you don't want him to thinking if he makes a mistake, then you don't want him playing nervous either, right? Like, No, and I think part of the growth process, if you actually really want to dive into the growth process, I think part of the growth process with, with a guy like Dennis, a guy like Michael Rasmussen, uh, those types of players, it's, it's learning to control what you can control and not worrying, not playing afraid to make a mistake, regardless of what the message is or isn't from the, from the GM and the coach uh, going out and, and controlling what you can control. And so, you know, my message to Dennis was go play good hockey. Um, we, we're not getting anywhere ahead of ourselves in terms of how long or how many minutes or any of that type of stuff. I did tell him that, you know, we're addressing 7D and when you dress 7D, uh, minutes get scarce, it gets scarce, I should say. And, and um, uh, you know, there, there isn't a, a doubt that someone's going to get that 70 minutes. And I told him to start, that's going to be him. And that was the spot Juice was in. And, you know, the more power play time we have, especially with his unit, the more ice time he ends up accumulating. Um, but if not, he's got to go in, in those shifts that he gets and play really well. And it's enough minutes to make an impact, um, you know, and he's just got to go and play well. And was there a discussion with you and Steve about how long it was fair to at least give him a minimum or kind of? Um, I wouldn't get into that discussion uh, regardless of what was, you know, I'm not really going to get into any of the talks that Steve and I have. We, we'd prefer to keep those discussions private, but certainly, uh, you know, we, we thought it was the, the, the right move to make at this time and we'll see. Thank you. Next up, Max Boltman with the Athletic. Hey Jeff, I know it's probably a little different when you do have 7D, but what kind of partner does do you think Dennis succeeds with on the blue line there? Um, you know, I, I I would say I would say there's different ways to look at that. You know, he's actually played well with Phil Heronic, who who's more of a similar type player in terms of puck mover, and I, I think he's played well at times with a guy who's more of a steady steady guy who defends. I don't think it's necessarily partner driven. Um, I think it's his own play, and and uh, his own play will dictate his success. And then with the second power play unit, I mean, is part of the advantage of having him that maybe he can help kind of get. Mantha go and he was obviously such a big power play weapon for you guys last season. I mean, do you think that the way that Dennis moves the puck up there can kind of help jumpstart that that group? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, I think uh, Juicer done a good job on it too, and I, I don't know that Dennis will be better on it than Juicer. So, um, you know, if he is great, but I thought Juicer done a good job on it. You know, those guys want to jumpstart the power play; they got to jumpstart themselves. Like, let's be honest. Uh, 
you know, you're talking about guys that, that have been around the league a, a long time. They shouldn't, you know, wait for uh, Dennis to, to jumpstart it for them. Um, you know, right now they haven't had tons of, of opportunity because the other units scored way more, so they keep getting put out first. Uh, I don't have a one and a two unit uh, right now. We have two units, and then the one that has the most success is going to be put out uh, first. And so, um, you know, I think for that group to jumpstart their power play, they got to jumpstart it themselves as a group of five, not one guy. And then any update on Bernier? Uh, nothing further. Thanks. Yep. Next question from Ansar Khan with MLive. Yeah, Jeff, uh, what, uh, just going into these two games against Nashville, what do you want to see carry over from the six game homestand? And what do you want to see uh, better for your team? I thought through the six games, um, you know, they were all a little bit different. I thought as it went along, we, we played better and better defensively. I thought as it went along, we played faster. Uh, I thought as it went along, we managed the puck better. And so I think those, those three things are real important. I think we got to manage the puck. Um, I think when you manage it and you execute, you play faster out of your end and faster in the neutral zone. And, and then I, I thought, again, I thought you have to defend well to have a chance to win. Um, I'd like to see when we are in those close games, make sure we're not beating ourselves. Uh, make sure we're not making mistakes that that are you know a lot, games end up you know as we go down the stretch here they'll probably be like the other night it's zero zero with two something to play in the second and we got to make sure we don't give up a breakaway in that situation um, that's an unforced error we, that can't happen so we are continuing to get better at getting pucks out and getting pucks in continue to make sure that we don't make uh, you know that we make the other team earn their offense uh, our areas we can get better at and uh, with that team. Is the, is the next team uh, right right above you as far as points percentage? I mean, do you look at it as a chance to, to close the gap on them? Is that something that you pay attention at all to the standings? Well, I think, you know, as a hockey team, you know, we, we have opportunities here with, with uh, teams above us, whether it's percentage or just points that, that, you know, we think we can close the gap on. So let's make sure we're doing that. But I think the first and foremost thing is to make sure that we're focused on a, on a good process. Um, but certainly as a group, we don't want to be at the bottom of the standings. We want to claw our way up the standings. And so we got the opportunity to go down to Nashville and do that. And just a follow up on Bernie. Uh, will he, is he out for the next two games? I mean, will he, he not make the trip or do you know yet? I haven't. Uh, we haven't determined that yet, so I got uh, to talk to Pete Van Zandt and uh, see if it's uh, worthwhile. But my gut is that he's out for the next two games. Okay, thanks. Next up, Ted Colton, Detroit News. Hey, Jeff, now that you're seeing Nashville for like the sixth or seventh time here, how much is scouting a part of it? Or is it you basically you guys going in and just you know, what we do best and what you guys do best? I think the game of hockey in general is about what you do best um, compared to what they do best. I think that's the game of hockey. It's a very, very fluid game. It's not football where, where the X's and O's, you can say this is what exactly it's going to look like. So I still, I think in general, it's always about executing your game better than the other team. Um, with that said, certainly as you go through these long, uh, you know, go through these seasons where you're playing teams over and over again, um, you know, it, it, the, there's, I don't want to say secrets, but you kind of get a feel for each other, uh, you know, what they're trying to do, uh, what we're trying to do, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's, uh, what we've been able to exploit, what they've been able to exploit. And you get, it, it certainly gets even closer to what you do best to, compared to what they do best. There's no doubt about it. Sounds good. That's all I need. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Last question from Gary Santaniello with New York Times. Gary, you're on mute. Gary, now you don't have video. You get video now, we need mute. Sorry about that, Jeff. All right. Just following up on the previous question, you know, it's been a weird season schedule wise, but you guys almost exclusively have played these two game series. And regardless of how many times you see a, a team, have you found a pattern of you know what you typically do between games or you know i thought uh, going into it you know we've practiced the majority of days in between games um with the, with the hope that if you needed to make an adjustment you could make an adjustment um you know and try to take our days off in be, you know after series that hasn't been exclusively the case the schedule dictates that a little bit but that's what we've tried to do 
Um, probably the biggest adjustments or, and I wouldn't even call it adjustments necessarily, maybe just areas of focus then, you know, one of those would certainly be specialty teams in between the two games. Um, you, you know, I, I think it's very, very difficult to beat a team twice, uh, the same team. Um, you know, I saw that going back to my college hockey background. Yeah. And, and it, it, you know, we had this in the American League as well. I think it's very difficult. So I think it makes for very competitive games night in and night out. Um, I, I think, you know, the lack of uh, what there is a lot less of is there's a lot less of um, travel advantage, meaning, you know, there's times in a normal NHL schedule where uh, Winnipeg might be coming in to uh, play us. They played the night before and they get in at uh, four in the morning. Yeah. That's a huge advantage to, to, to us at that point and vice versa. And now, for the most part, we're all in the same boat. You know, we're all getting in at the same, you know, and you're just playing each other. So travel becomes less of a, of a factor in those games. Um, you know, so I think, you know, all those things are, are unique. Um, in the end, uh, I've, I've enjoyed the, the way the schedule's gone. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Feedback short.